Hello, and welcome to the IDT Plans Portal Training video series. My name is Katie Rucker, and today I'll be showing you how to apply for a project in the IDT Plans Electronic Plan Review Portal. First, you'll need to navigate to the IDT Plans Portal page for which you are actively registered and log in. Uh, once you're logged in, you'll want to look at the options available to you below the image on the screen. So these may vary by portal, but will always include an option to apply. So if you look at the screen that we're on right now, you'll see that I am logged in. My name is up here in the blue box, which tells me that I am logged in. And we'll also see that below this picture, I do have an option to apply. City of Gravity here refers to it as a permit. Some organizations re might refer to it as plan review. Uh, but ultimately, you're looking for the orange button that says apply. So let's go ahead and click that. Now, once there, uh, you'll be routed to the application page, and you'll simply want to fill out the on-screen form, selecting first your application category. So in this case, we'll go ahead and do planning and zoning. And then you'll want to go ahead and choose your application type. And in this case, I want to go ahead and apply for a site plan. Now, if you ever are not entirely clear on which option you want to choose, you do have the option of choosing these Help Me Choose buttons. Uh, these options are actually going to pull up some very basic information for you about what each application is. Uh, they'll pull up the same field, so it doesn't matter which one you choose. But ultimately, it's going to help you find the right application without having to necessarily reach out for help from the city. You'll want to go ahead and name your project. And then hit save and continue. From here, you'll just want to go ahead and continue filling out the project information as it's prompted. Required fields are always indicated in bold, and those that are not are considered optional. If you do come across a checklist like we have here, you'll note that we do have a few options here. We can check each item individually, or we can check all. Uh, this varies again by portal, but you'll want to go ahead and read through the requirements for submittal and for what needs to be on the plan. Now, as an applicant, if any of these items are cause for concern or you have questions, you always have the option of submitting a comment and that will actually be submitted with your submittal checklist so it will notify the city if there's something that you've already spoken to somebody at the city about or if you had a question either one any real situation there is, is appropriate, you can edit and remove as well. So once you've gone ahead and done that, let's go to our next screen. And we get to our project location. Now, this system is tied to a GIS uh, verification. So as soon as we start typing, it starts pulling up uh, legitimate addresses, automatically pulls up that data, that parcel, the owner, I hit confirm and it shows that it is a verified valid address. So I'm gonna hit save and continue there. And now I'm just gonna go ahead and continue filling out the information that is required. We pull up our project acreage, let's say that it's 25. My total habitable floor area will say is uh, 7,500 square feet total building square footage of now in this case if i just answered habitable floor area and maybe i've got multiple buildings that we're using and i'm not quite sure what we're asking for here i always recommend hovering over your little question box here and it might give you some additional information so right here we're saying please provide the total square footage of all buildings to be utilized so let's say in this case that's 98 my existing use, uh, let's say I'm taking a barn and turning it into an event center. So we're gonna go from agricultural to commercial. So I'm gonna hit save and continue. Enter in my information as the property owner. I'm also going to be the applicant. Of course, I can always add somebody new. To my address book.
And then I do have the option here of adding additional contacts. So for example, if I know who my architect is at this point, I know who my contractor is, I can always go ahead and enter them just by checking the box and providing that information. Let's say I'm also the contractor. So I'm gonna fill in my information there. Once I hit save and continue, that locks kind of everything in. And you'll see that we get a summary page of everything we just filled out. Now, you'll be given an opportunity to look over this information, obviously right here, and you can edit this at this point. So you're not locked in. It's not like you can't go back. What you would want to do is come back down here. You do have a confirm or edit button. So confirming is going to move you forward to the next step in the application process. Editing will take you back to the very beginning and allow you to go through each field and verify that you have it right. So if I see that I entered in 7,500 square feet and now I'm realizing, whoops, that's actually supposed to be 7,570 or I missed something somewhere along the way, I added an extra zero, I can go ahead and edit those now before I submit it to the city. Um, something to note is that we do have a consent statement here that is required to be checked in order to move forward. Uh, so failure to do that is going to result in your application not being able to move forward. So I'll just kind of show you what that looks like. I get a button here. Please read the agreement marked in red and check the next box. Turns it red. So I will go ahead and check that and confirm it to move forward. And we should now be at the document overview screen. And you'll see that no documents have been uploaded to the screen. Um, we'll need to go ahead and do that using the uh, document management uh, portal. So uh, what you'll see here is that you have some submittal guidelines that are available to you on the side. I always recommend you take a look at those. Uh, because they might have some regulations or rules that if you don't follow may result in your application being delayed. So you definitely want to make sure you're looking at those items. To select the files that you want to download, you can either drag them into this uh, box right here or you can click the Add Files button. So I am going to go ahead and do that. And let's go ahead and navigate to those documents. Once you're ready to begin the process of uploading, just click that Start Upload button. And you'll see that they actually just start uploading automatically. A progress bar is going to show on the bottom to show you how fast things are going. And as soon as you're completed, it's actually going to return you back to that document overview screen. So you actually don't have to do anything here. Now that your documents have been uploaded, you'll have a confirmation of the files that were submitted. Uh, you can add more by selecting the Upload Files link again. You can also delete selected files, uh, invite other consultants to upload. So for example, if you're an architect and you work with an engineer, you don't have to project manage that entire uh, set of plans. You can upload yours and then invite the engineer to upload his. That's also going to uh, add that engineer as an applicant to the project, which means they have access to see all the comments that you do. So it's really nice to sort of divide and conquer based on your disciplines. Uh, you can also just save and continue uploading later. So maybe you know you're waiting on something. Go ahead and hit that save and continue later and it'll stop you right here. But uh, if you are done and ready to move forward, all you have to do is click save and continue. And we get to our payment screen. So if fees are required before submitting the application, they will be presented here in an itemized breakdown. You can opt to pay online if it's offered through the city or the jurisdiction in control of your portal, or offline, depending on those payment options. In both cases, the system will provide you with specific instructions on how to move forward. So just select the appropriate option and follow those instructions. I'm going to hit save and continue to move forward. 
And the very last step in the process is to confirm your application and submittal package. So until you confirm your project is not submitted for plan review. So this is very important. Um, this is not complete. You wanna make sure that you go ahead and click the confirm and submit for review button. This is not complete. You wanna make sure you also click this right here, which is gonna warn you, you're not going to be able to upload any documents or edit your application. So once your submittal package is confirmed, you're locked out as an applicant. And that's for version control to make sure everybody's looking at the same set of documents. So um, before you click that OK button, be sure that everything is in order before you click that final confirm and submit. And we're all set. So you can see that I have a green bar. My project has been submitted successfully. I've got a note that I do owe a total amount of $150 for my submittal, and here's some instructions for me. A copy of all this has been emailed to me as well. And from here, I can view my project or I can go to my submittal overview. One thing to note with the submittal overview that's really nice is that it actually tracks all of the projects that you have uh, regardless of jurisdiction. So if the city of Gravity, Arizona is next door to a city that also uses IDT plans and I submit to both of those, I can actually keep track of those right here at my submittal overview. You can also submit a new project, pay my fees, uh, resubmit, reply to comments, or even delete my project at certain points. So this is where you ultimately want to go to access sort of a rundown of your project at any point. You can access that by going to plan review, my submittals. I hope you found this information helpful in walking you through the application process, but of course feel free to access our additional training videos that are available to you for additional help or guidance. From all of us at IDT Plans, thanks for watching.